Hello, this is Ashton, and many have had questions about Docker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and teach you guys out, well, give you some information on Docker and how I set my Docker up. Uh, particularly in this section, it'll be I'm trying to set up Oracle. Uh, as you can know, Oracle can be a pain sometimes, sometimes if you are a new user or anything like that. Um, so let's uh, get started. So let's start out with what Docker is. Uh, Docker is containerization um, where I can set up VMs, virtual VM, virtual machines on my computer. And this is the Windows version. Um, so what I want to do is let's talk about uh, what operating systems support Docker. So uh, you can use it in Linux, you can use it in Mac, uh, and you can use it in Windows. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is um, you would like you want to go and search for Docker. You can search for Docker, okay, and uh, it'll give you a list of where Docker is. So let's see. Let's do it. So like Docker Hub, okay. So the Docker Hub gives you a bunch of images. So this was the latest image that I used for my Oracle SQL, okay. So right here, it gives you all the instructions in regards to Docker and everything, uh, some of the different settings that you want, um, and some of the things that you can uh, take advantage of. So if you have, like for instance right here, if you have scripts that you want to run as soon as the uh, container starts, uh, you can put those scripts, you can add these scripts to the Docker file, which is an advanced subject. So let's talk about getting started quickly, okay? So the first thing you do is right here I have uh, docker.com slash products slash docker dash desktop. Um, so I go here, I download Docker, and what happens is, and make sure that some of the um, prereqs is you have to have the Linux subsystem, you have to have, it's called WSL2. So if you look up um, WSL2 for Windows, which is the Linux subsystem, which is right here, okay? So right here is where it, it tells you about the Linux subsystem. This is one of the things that might be required depending on what Windows you're working on and what's the installation you already have. Um, you can go through these uh, instructions. I might make another video to go through these instructions to set this up. So say we install Docker. It's easy as just doing a download, okay? Say I downloaded everything. I installed it should be pretty simple and quick um, and after you install it to make sure to know that you have installed Docker correctly if you go and look into your tray which you can't see my tray right now but what I'll do you'll see this little symbol right here and this is the Oracle that I have running right now okay so say we have everything installed so the settings that I want I like to have everything out of the box to do some testing with Oracle and I'm using Oracle Express by the way and so say that I want to get a container up and running so let's do this and say uh, to test out that our docker is installed we can run docker and it gives us the entire gives us the entire um, help for the CLI so say if I want to do if I want to do a list of containers, let's do a CLS and let's go uh, Docker container LS. These are all the running containers. But if you have containers that are not running, you can do Docker container. Whoops, container LS all. Okay, and this right here will list. Whoops, I'm sorry. Let's do oops, let's see. Sorry. So let's see. Ah, that's why. Right here, sorry, typo and uh, if we do all okay so this will this will list all containers that are not running all containers that are running 
and any images that you have that you know that you ran in the past so also what you can do is you can go over to the actual docker um, platform it's kind of like a application that you actually put on your desktop and it helps you manage these okay so if I want to go into that um, if I want to go into the bash or into that container and do a few commands I can do that okay and so I did that by if you go over to the containers and apps right here okay if you click on this right here it'll pop up with a uh, screen and you're actually in that container to look around and this helps out if you want to provision a container or something like that to do something advanced or go and troubleshoot the container while it's running and see what's all available to you. So let's get to actually getting Docker up, getting a container up and running. So what I'm going to do is let's go over to my CMD. And uh, what I'm going to do is this is the command that I want. I took these commands out of that Docker out of that docker uh, those docker instructions that I got for this image but I have to make a couple change, changes because I already have uh, port 4961 running so let's do 63 and let's do uh, 83 okay and then what we're gonna do and remember uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste and then we run it okay and now our Docker is up and running. You see that? We have a new Docker up and running. It tells us what port it's on, the 49163. And now we have Oracle ready to go. So now let's talk about connecting to this Oracle. So in Docker, if you notice right here, I have 49163 going to 1521. 1521 is the uh, default port for to connect to Oracle, the Oracle database. So I, so what I want to do is I want to do port forwarding on my system. So on my system is 49163 in order to port forward to 1521 inside of the container. So now, uh, one thing that I did install was DB Beaver. Um, if you look at DB Beaver, so what can happen is if you go over to here and you type in DB Beaver, and so when you type in DB Beaver, you can actually download this tool. This is what I use to connect to multiple databases and whatnot. Okay. And you can actually download this. Uh, this is for Windows, Linux, and this is for Mac. Okay. So say we go into DB Beaver, and if you go and look at those Docker instructions for this container, it actually tells you some of the pa default passwords which if you configure this properly you can set your own passwords or get it up and running and change the passwords um, that's an advanced subject because if you're trying to get it production ready in this case we just want to do development and play around with Oracle so what we're gonna do is say we got DB Beaver up and running so what we want to do is do a new connection we want to pick Oracle and so right here is where you put all your host information. So that port that we had is the 4963. So what we're going to do is copy the 4963. We're going to paste it in here. Uh, let's do this. Copy and paste is not working properly. Let's copy it. Let's put it in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through local host. This way, doing it this way, you wouldn't have to install the loopback or anything like that. But the only thing you would have to do is install the SQL Plus, which might be in another video. Um, installing it, uh, SQL Plus, to actually connect to it through command line. So let's just talk about getting the basics right now. So that database that we want is XC, which is the default database that's made. And then uh, let's do our role right here as a sysdb. And then what we want to do is we're going to log in as sys, and then we're going to take the password, which the password is Oracle. Okay, and let's uh, test out our connection. See, we tested our connection. Now, one thing about this is you will have to uh, DB Beaver will um, give you the option to install the right drivers, 
all you do is click on the driver and hit install and then it install those JDBC drivers in order to connect to your Oracle database so what you can do is you can type finish and so if we go into here and see how we got the XC3 that's the one we just added so if you notice this is one of the things that I really liked in the Express is it puts in the uh, HR database which that database is for learning and for um, it comes right out of the box which uh, I use to teach a lot of my students so now let's uh, run some scripts to test this out so uh, what I do is I right click over here and um, let's go to uh, create now we don't want to create let's do it this way it'd be an easier way if we go up front click on the actual database and we go up front or schema and we add SQL okay so now I'm gonna take this script right here this is one thing I do to test out um, test out to make sure I'm getting the right data back and if you go and run this then what happens is you get the results so now let's talk about connecting uh, from SQL plus so I do I uh, like my students to use spooling and stuff like that and show me the spools so one way you can connect to SQL plus through SQL plus is you type in SQL plus and let me uh, so first you do the docker container LS let's do this first and see how we have we want to know that port right there so we want to connect to this one right here so I'm gonna go SQL plus and let's uh, bring this up right here okay so it's this port right here okay so I'm gonna type in SQL plus and uh, what I'll do is let's uh, put our username in and then it's gonna be sys we're gonna use sys so we can um, get to any database that we want and then um, we're gonna put in our username I mean our password and it's gonna be at and then our local host and then what we'll do is that port that we want 49163 so we'll put 49163 and then our actual database and then as sys dba okay and so now we're connected so let's do our same select statement that we did so let's do a select all from hr dot jobs okay and so if you notice it gives me the results everything is working uh, and this is your first step to a good developers experience thanks guys